Uh, good morning everybody. Welcome to day two of South Downs Way. Yesterday we left Winchester about eight o'clock in the morning. We walked 16 miles to, uh, we're currently just the other side of Old Winchester Hill, a place called Meon Springs, which was a uh, campsite that we didn't know existed. Really nice. It's, um, it's very calm down here in the valley, so there's no wind at all. Uh, the sun's just come up over the hilltop. It is about quarter past seven, and the plan today is to get walking by eight o'clock because we've got to do, what we've got to do today, 17 miles, I think. Oh, in terms of <laughs> my broken body, not too bad, stiff. Stiff and sore when I woke up, you know, getting my legs going was was tricky. But um, I think I've come through yesterday relatively unscathed. I had a slight pain in my little toe, but it's not a blister. I think it was just where it was a bit squashed in my boot. I think it's all the sort of the, the downhill stuff pushes your toes forward. I think it's probably a little bit of that. And I think my little toenail was slightly long, so I had a tip from my walking companion and I used a stone to file it down when we stopped yesterday evening somewhere that seemed to work yeah it didn't feel too bad this morning I think once I get going I might feel it again but I'm gonna have coffee a little bit of porridge and uh, pack up and get going I think <sighs> the forecast today is for wetness but I think not till later in the morning or even lunchtime at the moment so uh, more we can get done now the better I think yeah all good all good right let's get on with it noisy that thing isn't it it is it must be it's some oh sort of... it's great you can pick it up great let's have a look yeah right we're on our way Good morning, Good Mr. Morning. Lindley. Oh, don't go off too fast, remember. Oh, okay. Lowest gear possible to start <laughs> with. Everything's creaking. Hey, what, you left your towel there. Yeah. yeah. So we're a little behind schedule. It's half a state. It is half a state. Someone had to go and have a shave. Did and... they? Jesus. Don't blame me. It's clearly not me, is it? <coughs> Stig of the dump doesn't shave. Oh yeah, he slept okay. Oh yeah. You ready for another yes. day? Yes. That's yes. Where I am. Bring what? it on. Oh, is, is that the attitude, is it? It is. <laughs> right, yeah, let's get on and walk a few miles. I don't know. Let's walk a mile. A mile. One at a time. Come on, one at a time. And uh, yeah, going okay. I'm starting to loosen up a little bit. I um, just overheard one of Warren's facts. So I, I claim it as my own knowledge. But uh, this what I'm on is Halmaka Lane. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's an old drover's lane, uh, drover's path. And drover's paths apparently were for driving cattle to market. Halmacker is a village just outside of Chichester and uh, we believe that um, they would have driven the cattle from down near Chichester up to Farnham and possibly all the way up to London. So hell of a footpath, quite a long one, uh, follows higher ground and obviously yeah for driving cattle to market which I only I only learnt what a drover's lane was oh, yeah, this this year, I think. I'd heard the expression, but I never really realised what they were. But yeah, quite interesting that they're old, you know, cattle driving routes across the country. Thank goodness you were brief saying all that. What? You know, I mean, I was succinct and you were even more not succinct. Was I not? Did no. I go on a bit? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Getting abused. 
from the man who spent 20 minutes telling me about trains. Well, mile 18, there or thereabouts. We're just coming up to the top of Salt Hill. And uh, yeah, definitely on the high ground. We just followed <laughs> the longest path of upness. It seemed never ending. But yeah, just got to the top. So quick drink and a snack. Fabulous views now. Butts the hill. You can see the uh, telegraph thing on the top over there. Just the other side of that is where we're planning to have lunch. Seems a long way at the moment. From here, what do you think, Warren? Four miles, five miles? I'm just going to look. It's half past nine. So we've done two miles in that hour, by the way. Yeah, two which miles is your yeah, two, two mile, mile an hour target. Yeah. Yep. So that's good. This is my first. Mmm. Real Termet Caramel Energy Bar thing. Colin Outdoor Gear Essentials, Colin. Sent me a, a box with some food in it. And a couple of these. As a good luck thing for the trip, which is really nice of him. And uh, I've got four or five of these in my bag. And, they're really nice. Mmm. Thanks, Carl. Those benches, there's been a few of those Friends of the South Downs things. They're sort of carved benches. They're very cool and extremely useful having a little rest on. Uh, right on cue, it's just starting to rain. Butts a hill, obviously, where I am, but just the other side of it is the Queen Elizabeth Country Park, and in the entrance of the park, there is a cafe and a water point. And I'm going in the cafe for lunch, not a moment too soon. I think it's gonna be a wet afternoon. It'd be nice to sit in the dry for an hour and just fuel up before we attempt an afternoon's rain walking. Okay, back on the trail. Sat in there for about 45 minutes, had some nice food. I had a cup of tea and I got a coffee to go. I also got a bit of cake in my bag for later. But yes, the rains have come. I just had the debate with Warren, you know, should we get waterproofs on? And the path has meandered into this thick forest, so... It's raining out there, but it's not raining in here yet. I think the tree canopy is thick enough that um, the rain's not getting through, so... Result? Right, so yeah, what do we got to do? 11 miles this afternoon. We can do this. Of course we can. Of course we can.
left the uh, Queen Elizabeth Country Park behind. There's a drop down there. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where we are. We're sort of heading towards Harting Down now. Um, there's a ways to go before we get there. Probably a mile or two. Oh my God. But yeah, it's currently coming up for two o'clock. So we've been going, we're just over an hour since lunch or maybe about an hour. So I'd suggest we maybe have done about two miles. Got about nine to go today. Getting wet now. <laughs> Been debating for the last hour and a half whether to stop and put my waterproofs on. We were in that forest and there wasn't a lot of point, but we've left the forest now and I'm actually getting wet. Beautiful views, little glimpses of views through the forest. But being in amongst these trees is bringing warm feelings to my heart. Who said that? Huh. Look at it through there. I think we're going up there. <laughs> it looks horrific, doesn't it? You can't really tell, it just looks white. Are we going the right way? Yes, we are. We, by the way, we have paper maps as well as, you know, ordnance survey on the phone, but mostly those finger posts are, um, they're pretty good. There's one or two missing ones. You know, back there, we got to a junction and the finger posts were rotted and uh, snapped and we couldn't tell which way to go. So we had to check with the, you know, map and stuff. But on the whole, it's really well signposted so far. really coming down now but on the plus side this is the 25 mile marker point according to our map and uh, yeah quarter done nice feeling feeling good just had a nice message from mr. muddy paws saying keep going and that he was very proud of me I'm sure he meant it in the uh, You've done really well, style. Bless him. Thanks, John. Lots of love. And uh, yeah, I had a message from Wild Camper earlier. He's somewhere sunny with an infinity pool drinking beer. Cheers for that, Rob. Thanks for the pictures. Shout out to both of those guys. Nice guys. Anyway, 25 miles done. We have. We have. Feeling proud? Oh yes. Bit wet now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit wet. I keep dithering with the whether to put wets on or yeah. not, but I'm wet already. I don't, I don't see the point. But I've blooming carried them all this way. The least I could do is wear them. But I'm a nice temperature. Oh yeah, yeah. not cold. I'm wet, but yeah. it's it's And when it stops raining we will dry. Yeah. <laughs> when it stops raining. It's it's I just checked the weather a minute ago and yeah. uh, it's only going to get heavier for the next three hours. Oh, uh, minor, minor detail. Then. And then it'll slow down mm. at about seven o'clock, I Will think. It? Six, six o'clock maybe. Just yeah. re-pitch up. Well, we just pulled over back there at um, mile 26, I think, for a piece of cake we, we've got cake to take away from that uh, lunch stop. I had a bit of chocolate cake and uh, we found a little, it was an old stable block with a sheltered bit. So we sat out of the rain uh, under there and had a piece of cake, which was nice. A bit of a sugar rush coming up. Pretty grim up here. I think this is supposed to be one of the most picturesque parts of the journey, but clearly we're not seeing a lot, are we? 
It's a shame, but that's okay. That's okay. So we're on about mile 28. And today we want to get to mile 33. So we are close. Beacon Hills up ahead. And uh, that is mile 29. So if we can get to that, four miles to do, which we can do in two hours. It's just after four o'clock. It's lovely down there. I have been here in the sunshine and that's a nice view, but you can sort of get a sense of it. <laughs> We're kind of in the clouds. So that bad boy in front of us is Beacon Hill. That represents mile 29 and the official South Downs Way path goes around Beacon Hill. But we decided we want to go up and over, mostly to check in with the top because this hill was the, uh, where the germ of the idea of doing this came from. Warren and I did a night hike, walked along the South Downs Way a couple of miles while camped up on top of this Beacon Hill in the winter time, I think it was, last winter. And uh, yes, well, over breakfast, coffee and, you know, bacon sandwiches and stuff, we both decided, wouldn't it be a good idea to walk the whole of the South Downs Way? So, I just want to check in with the top and, uh, Give a little nod to my past self sitting up there, smug, drinking coffee, eating bacon and uh, imagining that he could walk a hundred miles. Stupid boy. Definitely, definitely wet. Somewhere between mile point 30 and 31. I think we're approaching 31, yeah. which means two miles to go yep. in a minute. Proper you know, English countryside. Fields, are they straw? Footpath with hedgerows, forest in the distance, English summer rain. What could be better? Well, it's six o'clock and we've been hiking in this spooky forest for what feels like about two hours, but we are within a mile of where we plan to stay. So we are getting there, but I'm in serious pain now. Hips, legs, ankles, 
shoulders, you name it, it all hurts. My boots are wet, like wet through. I think I've now got a blister under my I don't know, sort of ball of my foot kind of area. I can feel something that's not pleasant. I think tomorrow that's going to be sore. But we're finally leaving this forest. Thank God for that. But on the bright side, the rain has sort of stopped for a moment. Morris is doing a map check to see where we are. Let's go and have a nosy. How are we getting on? Yeah, we got about three miles to... <laughs> we got uh, a kilometre. A kilometre. A kilometre. Kilometre and a, a squidge. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Oh, how long are we going to take to do a kilometre? 15 minutes? Uh, 15 minutes plus contours. I mean, it's two, two, three hours till dark, isn't it? it Six uh, o'clock yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple, couple of three. Couple of three. three. Yeah, a couple of three hours. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, it's 10 to 7. And you'll notice we're still walking. We uh, got to the, what was it called? Warren? Uh, yeah, uh, Lynch Ball, Lynch Down. Yeah, we got to Lynch Down and uh, the place where we planned to wild camp was full of sheep and clearly, you know, private land, farmer's land. <coughs> and uh, I'm never entirely comfortable camping places like that because <coughs> I, I come from a, a farming background as a child and uh, they can get quite grumpy with uh, you know strange city folk just pitching up and sleeping on their land so we uh, we did a bit of googling I did a bit of googling and uh, two miles on is a place called Manor Farm camping and b and &B. so I phoned the lady and uh, yeah, there she was in. She said, yes, of course you can come pitch a tent in our field. And uh, I said, what else she got? <laughs> and uh, she said they, she had a cabin. So uh, I'm soaked through. I've definitely got blisters. I don't really wanna pitch my tent right this minute because I'm absolutely shattered and in pain. So uh, we've discussed and uh, I think we might take the cabin option which I've built up in my head as a you know cedar log cabin on a on a lake <coughs> and uh, Warren reckons it's gonna be a shed so if it's somewhere in between I'm gonna be very happy but yeah just a place to sleep in the dry get everything hung up get myself dry that's enough you know comfy well a bed a bed not a floor and uh, and we'll see so consequently got about a mile and a half more to do and that's okay are you okay Warren yeah it's good uh, good plan good plan <laughs> yep mutual decision big thumbs up from Warren big thumbs up. What, what Warren means is uh, he just wants to keep going. He'd walk to Eastbourne tonight. No? <laughs> uh, my feet hurt. We're in our cabin and uh, it's actually it's not too bad. I need to get out of these wet things. I've been shaking. We just the lady gave us a uh, Indian takeaway menu because she said, oh, if you want a beer, you know, there's a pub a mile down the road. I said, oh, I'm not capable of that. So she gave us Indian takeaway menu and said, oh, if you order a takeaway, they'll, um, they'll send a couple of beers with it. So as a result, we've ordered an Indian takeaway. <laughs> oh man. Ah. Yes, I need to get out my wet clothes and assess the damage to my feet. Wet socks. Ah. How's that looking? Trench foot. 
Oh yeah, blister there. Yeah, just, oh that's sore. What about the other one? Uh, just the beginnings of one in that little gap. It's the reality of this, it's, uh, you know, I wanted to see if I was fit enough and able enough to do this and today's been today's been a proper challenge I think it's the wet weather I mean, these socks are soaked through my boots are soaked through trousers are wet tops wet so it is very nice to be inside with a heater there's a little electric heater in here so that is that is that's a, that's a result Oh, I can't speak. Right, I'm going to get squared away, change my clothes, and uh, wait for this curry to arrive. But yeah, we're in, and it's about quarter past eight. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, <Ron. laughs> Cheers, <Eric. clears throat> Nice to have it delivered, Bruce. Oh. <laughs> hmm. It means. Didn't have to pitch my tent. Yeah. Didn't even have to cook myself mm. dinner. Mm. I needed that. Mm. Well, we've done dinner. Feeling a little bit brighter about things. Is that smeary or is it just the light? I've got my feet elevated. Warren's hanging up all the boots over the heater. Doing a good job there, Warren. Doing a good job. Bunk beds tonight and uh, I think I'm going to leave this one here. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Got a beer to drink. And that's it. I'm going to fall into bed. So thank you very much. I'll uh, see you in the morning. Night, Warren. Yeah, night, Dad. <laughs> <That's> good. <laughs> see you later.